All right, hello and welcome everyone to our Trending Thursdays class series. My name is Charlotte Scheid and I'm one of the Giant Company Dietitians. Thanks for joining me here for our last class in July for this series. Today we're going to be focusing on something, of course, is, um, you know, what am I trying to say? Um, what is trending right now this season uh, for July is summer suppers. So hopefully everybody is enjoying the hot weather and actually it's been kind of cooler out. So it's the perfect time to have a uh, summer supper outside. So we're going to be focusing all on that and more specifically on foil packets, foil packet meals. And if you can uh, put your answer in the chat, does anybody currently make foil packets? I think I saw a couple of you in the chat that said um, that you do, but you can put your answer in the chat if you have made a foil packet meal before. Um, they're super easy. So let's see. So not often. So it looks like a lot of you are saying no. But some, are, but some are saying yes, too. So hopefully if you do not make foil packet meals, this will inspire you to do so. OK, so this is my for, or my I shouldn't say first poll question, but my um, poll question for today is what is your favorite way to enjoy a summer meal? And so I'm going to pull up this poll right now and you can answer that question. So the choices that I have so for summer supper is so favorite way. So we have grilling, a picnic board if you've made a you know charcuterie board or you just like to stay inside um so you can go ahead and answer that question i know for myself i love to grill grill and cook out but but recently i have been making boards too so let's uh, give everybody a couple more seconds so that question all right so we end the poll and share the results so it looks like oh, let's see if i can share these can, you put your, can everybody see those results? For some reason, it said, said that it's not able to share. Can, can people see that? Okay, so I'll sh me. I'm not sure why it's not sharing, but it looks like pretty much for the most use. So 86 of you said that you like to grill, about 12 said picnic, two said board, but then 24 said I like to stay inside. Um, let me, the white side. Try to share. Okay, well, it's not sharing, but that's okay. So it looks like the majority of you do like to grill, but um, so if you do like to grill, foil packets are actually a great are a great thing to put on the grill, or you can put them in the oven too for those of you who like to stay inside. Okay, so ways to enjoy summer suppers, like what we mentioned, it's a great time to grill or cook out outdoors. You can do do a picnic style. You can of course do a blanket on the ground and you know, enjoy whatever types of foods that you like in a picnic style. You can do theme dinners, whether that's, you know, a um, Mexican food theme or a burger or, you know, some type of theme dinner or it's always a lot of fun, especially when you have kids. Of course, we have a lot of in-season produce, so you can kind of do a farm to table type of theme. Um, another way, of course, to enjoy a summer supper is and with a frozen treat. And of course, ice cream is always really delicious, but there's a lot of type of healthier frozen treat options or stuff that you can make. I know one thing that we make at home are a um, kind of like a yogurt popsicle, um, a lot of different recipes to choose from uh, with frozen treats. And then, of course, you can do a charcuterie style so you can make a board. I know in um, a class a couple weeks ago, I made a burger board or a turkey burger board, which was a lot of fun. So you can kind of go off of that theme or, you know, whatever that you would like. So a lot of different ways to enjoy summer suppers because the weather is very nice and it's nicer out. Um, of course, Right now, it's not too hot, which makes it even better. So when we're talking about foil packets, so it looks like a lot of you said that you, well, I think for most of you said maybe you're not doing foil packets, but a couple of you are. Um, but what's really nice about foil packets, and again, you can either put them on the grill or put them in the oven, but it's the perfect way to keep mess to a minimum, which I always appreciate, so easy cleanup. And then it also helps if you are concerned about portion control or your calories or what you're eating. It really helps with portion control because you're already portioning it out. Um, so when we're thinking about a foil pack of meal, you don't always have to deal with a recipe, but these are the different types of stuff. So I like to think about if you're just trying to be creative with it or try something um, a little bit different, but you want to start with a protein. So that can be things like chicken, salmon, cod, shrimp. We'll be using shrimp today, or you can incorporate steak, tofu, um, tempeh, or sausage. You're going to add in vegetables, and of course, this time of year, there's a lot of in-season vegetables, which makes them even more delicious. 
um, but broccoli, carrots, potatoes, bell pepper, red onion are great choices. You can choose your seasonings. Of course, this is um, only four of the many different types of seasonings that you can use. So we have um, our brand at the store, we have a bunch of different marinades. One of my favorites is the lemon pepper. Um, you can incorporate lime or lemon juice. Of course, garlic is kind of a staple um, with different types of seasonings and flavors. And then pesto, we'll be using a pesto in our recipe for today. You know, some recipes too, or, or just some people who make boil packets, they also like to add in other things. You can always add in some type of uh, grain like rice or quinoa for a little bit of extra protein. So some cooking tips. So again, I mentioned you can put it on the grill. So if you do put it on the grill, probably do it on um, like a medium high heat for about 10 minutes, about like 10 to 15 minutes or in the oven, preheat to 400. It's just kind of like an estimated range. I know for our recipe today is 425, but about 400 is usually pretty good. So if you're thinking about foil packets and what to do, there's just so many different types of options. But again, one of my favorite things is that it is perfect way to keep a mess to a minimum and then easy cleanup, which I always appreciate with children. Well, when someone said they do the foil packets when camping, that's a perfect thing. And there's even recipes also if uh, with camping and like just if you want to have a dessert in a foil packet, there's a lot of different recipes for that too. Um, so it doesn't have to be a meal, but it can be kind of like a dessert too. So these are types of foil packet products that I wanted to mention um, just because they make the foil packet meals a little bit easier. So this is uh, a garlic herb marinade. I mentioned I like the lemon pepper, but these are our taste of inspiration marinades, a lot of different ones to choose from. I believe there's also a pineapple um, kind of flavor as well, which is nice. We also have um, already washed vegetables. This is our vegetable medley. Today we're gonna be using the broccoli florets that are already washed and ready to go and already cut up, which are really nice when it comes to foil packets. We have these chicken breasts, individual, individual size ones. So if you're just doing, um, you know, not a lot of foil packets, you don't want to use a bunch of chicken, just a little bit of chicken, the individual packets are really nice. And the same with the Atlantic salmon as well. They come in an individual size. If you're also looking to add in some garlic, I like our minced garlic uh, container. It comes There's a minced and then chopped garlic as well that comes in a container, but it really saves you uh, the mess of cutting up garlic and your pan's getting you know, smelly. So I like the minced garlic always to have on hand. You can also incorporate, especially if you're doing a like beef fajitas or chicken fajitas in a foil packet, the fajita blend is really nice because it's already cut up and ready to go. And then I also have um, Italian seasoning. So we'll be using that today, but a lot of different seasonings to choose from. So next time you're in store and you're thinking about foil packets and how to make it even easier, these are some options to look for. So I wanted to also mention, of course, um, in our Savory Magazine, you can view that, or the Savory Magazine is in store, normally in the front of the store, or you can also view it online. So this is our most recent edition featuring, featuring summer salads. But if you go on our Savory Online uh, website database, there's a whole bunch of different recipes on there, but they have really nice foil packet recipes as well. I just wanted to mention a couple. So I've actually made this one. So this is a salmon and veggie foil packet. Um, so this gets three guiding stars. So for those of you who are new, we have a guiding star program on our either recipes or products in stores. So the more stars that something has, you can go up to three, the more nutritionally beneficial it is. So this one gets, oh, so it has, so the more stars, it has more vitamins, minerals, healthier fats, fiber, and those types of things. So this one gets three guiding stars, uh, pretty simple to make. So in your foil packet, um, you can you can either purchase the Nature's Promise, the roasting blend. So this is a combination of rosemary, thyme, and parsley. Or you, of course, can just you know incorporate them separately. Or you can do fresh. But that's the roasting blend. You can add a little bit of butter, some lemon, um, the country blend vegetables. Or you can even add you know even add that separately. I believe that's like corn peas, carrots, that type of thing. Um, so you can either add that, or you can just add them um, fresh adding in zucchini. So zucchini is in season right now and it's usually pretty plentiful with zucchini. I love a good white wine, uh, white wine or white wine vinegar, you can add to that. And then the salmon. So pretty simple to make great protein in that. Um, so it really makes for a pretty easy meal. And I'll be making this recipe in sometime in August for one of our meal solution classes. Uh, but this is a beef fajita packet, so this gets one guiding star. So we have our sirloin steak, um, and then 
it's incorporating that fajita blend mix that I had mentioned, some olive oil, chili powder, paprika, cumin, so a lot of different great seasonings and flavors in there, um, flour tortillas, guacamole, and then uh, for serving, you can incorporate some lime wedges, salsa, cilantro, you can do a plain Greek yogurt, um, but super, again, easy to make and um, good fiber and protein in that as well. So that's another different option, especially if you like a more of like a red meat meal. And then if you're into like a chicken and potato, um, you can do skinless chicken thighs. I mentioned that garlic and our marinade, some russet potatoes, uh, onion, uh, cheese. So this recipe does have a little bit more sodium in it, probably coming from uh, the cheese. So if you're looking to kind of reduce the sodium in it, you, you know, you don't always have to add that. You can get reduced sodium options or kind of um, put other seasonings in it. And then you can also add some fresh parsley as well. So just giving another idea for kind of a, a, a chicken and potato kind of meal. All right, so our featured recipe, let me actually just look at the chat. Actually, I'll go, I'll go into the chat after the recipe. Um, so this is our featured recipe. It's a pesto shrimp and vegetable foil packet. And I will mention uh, before class what I did. So actually, let me go over the ingredients. So for our pesto shrimp and vegetable foil packet, we have a bag of our baby red potatoes. Um, so I already microwaved our potatoes um, according to the recipe, but I just got, you know, the, come, the baby red potatoes that come in the bag. Um, so this is a 24 ounce. So you want one 24 ounce bag of baby red potatoes. So what I did before class is I just cut them in half. Um, I put them in, put them in a bowl right here with some plastic wrap on it and microwaved it for about four minutes or so. Just so it's like a little bit tender. Of course, you don't want it to be all mushy, but just trying to cook it down a little bit before we put it, uh, put it in the oven because uh, you only want to put the foil, this recipe in the oven for about 12 minutes or so, just until like the shrimp, um, uh, I'm trying to say, the shrimp is, you know, warmed up and cooked. So I already did that before class. We mentioned our fresh broccoli florets. So we have our, um, I'm trying to think, the 12 ounce bag. All right, yes. So what's nice about this is it's already cut up. Of course, you can also, if you want to just buy regular broccoli and cut it up, but this just uh, leaves out, you know, one step that you have to do. This is already washed and this is ready to go. So we have our fresh bro broccoli um, florets. We have our frozen raw shrimp. Um, so you can either do raw or cooked. So I chose the cooked. Um, what I did is you can either thaw this overnight or you can um, kind of soak it in cold water. So I um, kind of thawed it out overnight and put in a little bit of cold water to make it even more thawed out. We have some cherry tomatoes. Of course, any time anytime when you uh, cook cherry tomatoes, it really brings out even more sweetness, which is really good. We have um, one cup of our prepared uh, pesto. So I don't know if anybody uses pesto or bought it in the store. Um, so this does have, you know, more sodium in it. I know a lot of you have questions about sodium, but one way to reduce it too, there's a lot of different types of pesto recipes out there. So if you don't want something prepared basil pesto because you're trying to reduce sodium, you can always make your own pesto, which is always good too. But if you want the prepared, one less step that you have to do. Also, you are gonna put in some Italian seasoning and then usually after it cooks, you can serve it with either a lemon wedge on which you can also kind of squeeze it over the foil packet meal. Okay. So that is our recipe. And so you can see here um, in the nutrition facts, um, the sodium is higher, but again, you can always make your own pesto to kind of reduce that sodium, but it's a good source of protein and even fiber as well. So definitely an easy meal, um, easy meal to make. Okay, so let me stop sharing my screen and we will get started. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is cut up my cherry tomatoes. So you can see right here, I'm probably only going to do maybe a half or so of these. Um, oh, and before I get started, I'm going to preheat to 425. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so that is warming up. I'm going to cut up my cherry tomatoes. I'm just probably cutting them in half, but I don't really have to do, I think I probably got a little bit too many cherry tomatoes. So, um, 
we only do about half. And you can put your answer in the chat. Does anybody like a good cherry tomato with their meal? I probably mentioned this in other classes, but I definitely like cherry tomatoes, especially this time of year because they're super, just really delicious. Yep, looks like a lot of you. Yep, love a good cherry tomato or really just a tomato in general is really good. Oops. So what I'm doing again, just cutting up my cherry tomatoes. Well, first of all, I preheated my oven to 425, cutting up my cherry tomatoes. And again, with my potatoes, I already microwaved them, put on some plastic wrap with a little bit of water on the bottom and microwave for about four minutes or so. Probably either do four to five minutes, depending on your microwave. But why do I keep doing that? Um, you don't want it to be too tender, but um, just cook down a little bit. All right, so I'm just going to do a couple more of my cherry tomatoes, and then we can add, add this into a bigger bowl. All right, let's do a couple more, and then we're going to add in to our bigger bowl. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. So let me bring my bigger bowl in here. Okay. So I'm going to do, so I have my um, shrimp right here. So I did already thaw this. So I'm gonna add this, this to the bowl, this to the bowl. So this is one pound. You can also do this recipe, you know, either cooked or raw uh, with the shrimp. Add in an R. Let's see, so I'm gonna add in our potatoes. And again, the bag for our potatoes was a uh, 24, 24 ounce. All right, so we have that. We're gonna add in our tomatoes. Shrimp. So you can see this is moving pretty fast, which is nice. I think so. This definitely is pretty big, came in the package. So I'm just going to break this apart. All right, so we have our sweet potatoes, broccoli, shrimp. Cut this down. So that looks good. I'm also going to add in a one teaspoon of our cayenne seasoning. This is just our brand of cayenne seasoning. So we do one teaspoon. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper, and then we're going to add in our pesto. Probably need to invest in a bigger bowl for this. But we'll make it work. So this is the pesto that I have. Let me go grab. Okay. So I'm just gonna add a little bit out of a time and stir. So just trying to rotate it or mix it up so it's has to at least gets to some some parts. And even with serving this, once it's done and cooked, you can stir with a additional additional pesto. But again, if you're trying to reduce your sodium, you can always make this homemade, which I've done before, which is really delicious. But if you're looking to save some time, you can of course buy it prepared. Look at 
I'm just trying to make sure that the pesto gets to all of our ingredients. But I think for the most part, the pesto has gotten all over, so it's good. All right, let me go ahead and set this to the side. I'm going to put my cutting board at the sink, and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I did also before class is I kind of measured out my boil. So I already have my cooking sheet in there. So this is not actually like the biggest one, um, but if you do have a big one, you can probably fit four. What I will mention this recipe is four servings um, with 475 calories per serving. But um, for this cooking sheet, it's probably only going to be able to fit about like two foil packets. But if you have um, something bigger, um, you can probably fit the four, but I'll probably just fit two on here for now. I should put this up here for a second. Okay, so you can see there's my bowl right here. So all you're going to do is, and actually let me get a bigger spoon to dish this out into the foil packet. Here. Making sure that there is at least some shrimp in there. It smells so good. All right, so that's probably I don't want to over overdo it, but okay. You can see we can be able to see this amount. So, so what I'm going to do? I'm just going to fold it like this. Way, this way. You just want to make sure that the edges are folded up or else everything is kind of going to leak out. So I fold it this. And fold it again. You can really fold it. Fold it to the best of your ability, but again, you just want to make sure all the sides are folded up because um, everything's going to be coping in it. Right, so that looks good. Make sure everything is tight. All right, this is our foil packet meal. And actually, let me just do one more, and then I'll put it on the sheet. So again, super easy meal. You can you can tell that that didn't take me very long to do. But um, but again, you can either do this in the oven or on the grill, whatever that you would choose. If you'd like to mix stuff outside or just stay inside. But for grilling, medium high, and then in the oven, um, 425 for about 10 to 12 minutes. Great. So again, this folding, those are all fried. All right. That looks good. So let's see, here's another one. Let me not put this bowl over here so I can. So all you're going to do then is you're just going to take your cooking sheet and then just place it right on top. So we'll be putting this in at 425 for about 10 to 12 minutes, so just like that. So definitely, uh, definitely easy meal idea, but if you haven't tried foil packet meals, I would highly encourage you to do so because they are super easy and again, um, not a lot of cleanup, which is really nice. Okay. So someone said, does it need to be tightly sealed to capture steam or should the steam escape? I would probably try to keep it um, tight just so that, you know, there's more, a little bit more of steam. Um, the other reason I say that too is sometimes if steam escapes and it tends to get dry, so I would, um, you know, try to keep it more tight than loose. But that's a really good question. So would it work in an air fryer? I don't know if I would, I... Trying to think. Let me get back to you on that. I'm not sure. I don't really use air fryers too often, but I can. That's a good question. I can get back back to you on that question. I'm sure that you can do something um, something similar. Okay. 
So let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. Well, again, I appreciate everybody joining me for class today for this last class in our July series. We have a lot of fun upcoming Trending Thursday classes in our August series, which is focused on back to school simplified. Um, so our topics for that. So I'm going to be featuring um, basically it's like five ingredients um, and different types of recipes. So I'm going to be uh, focusing on sandwiches. So sandwich kebabs. Um, Jenny will be doing salads. And then we'll be doing PB and J and then no prep produce. So definitely if you haven't checked that out on Eventbrite and sign up for those classes, um, it'll be a lot of fun. All right. And for our July dietitian summary, which I'm sure all of you have already, already um, seen and heard, but definitely uh, register for more of our free virtual classes. We have a lot of fun stuff that's up and coming. I'll upload this video onto our YouTube channel. Um, you can earn two times choice points on all our brand. Whoops. Okay, I lost that one. Um, on all our brand rated or our brand items by the end of the month. If you haven't uh, followed us, you can follow us on Instagram and then TikTok. And of course, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always reach out to us at at that well being uh, well being email. All right, and again, if I did not get to your question. Um, you can always send me an email back um, to our follow-up email. Okay, there we go. All right. Well, again, I hope this gives everybody a great recipe inspiration for our for foil packets. Um, and I hope to see everybody again in a future class. And hopefully everybody um, enjoys the weather and is enjoying your summer. Take care and hope to see you again in a future class. Bye-bye.